Congress, 2019. Consent agenda. Three point one addition of items of new business to the agendas. There are none. Three point two minutes of the February 4th, 2019 regular board meeting. I think I'm supposed to read something. Did you read the, all the following no, items? I did not read that. It's not on this. Here you go. I have it, but I don't know. It's just a fancy piece of on this. Okay. Consent agenda. All of the following items which concern reports and items of routine nature normally approved by one board vote unless any board member desires to have a second <coughs> vote on any or all of these items. The consent agenda consists of the discussion, consideration, and approval of the following items. 3.1 addition, none. 3.2 minutes of the February 4th regular board meeting. Approval of the finance report. Approval of the activity fund report. Approval of the activity fund fundraisers. And approval of the child nutrition report. Okay, we'll start <clears throat> excuse me, with the finance report. Um, all the investments are current and up to date. Um, I believe that you have an attachment that has our expenses to date, comparison February 18, 2018 to February 2019. Um, just a couple of things to point out to you there uh, with regard to some of these expenses. And notice that um, this month to date we are up in our payroll and part of that expense of the payrolls, the pay raise, and then our stipend increase. Um, number 336, object code 336 is medical service, and that is um, assessments with our special education students. We've had an increase in those assessments, so um, you can see the increase year to date from last February to this February. 420, um, when we start towards the end of the year and this time of year to begin going through all the paperwork, um, we contract that out through Northwest Shredders. And so you'll see a cost increase each year under that particular object code. Number 430, um, we uh, did some repairs and some maintenance out of the general fund this month to protect that building fund. So there were some uh, purchase orders from Rose Plumbing, Northwest Electric, and Gray Dog. And there's also some repairs on some transportation um, that you'll see in purchase orders uh, to approve later on. I might also um, tell you that um, looking at our chargeables and our comparison year to date, uh, we are up in all of our chargeable categories. Uh, we did notice a decrease this month in our gross production tax. Um, it was about 80000 less than last month. So I think we're just now beginning to see um, the price that, you know, when the uh, price of oil was low back in October, November, and it stayed around that $55 mark. We're beginning to see. Um, that decrease at this time. Are there any questions about the finance report? Okay, if we look at activity funds, you can see on the um, month of February there are some receipts um, that we have received. Uh, baseball has a $5,000 receipt, and that's for some of the fundraisers and the banners um, donations. FFA continues to have some receipts from their blue and gold sausage and then purchasing FFA jackets. A 921 Vocal, um, that is some deposits for their senior, or excuse me, for their uh, electric gold trip. And then you see middle school had a large deposit down there, 19,000. That is their cookie dough that they collected and deposited this past month. There's still a few of those that are outstanding, but they are continuing to collect and turn in that money. Um, I might add that uh, Mrs. Durkee is continuing to work on our fundraisers. Um, there are 26 of those that you approved at the beginning of the year that we are not actually going to be uh, doing this spring and have not done this month. We talked about budgeting and, and working on reducing the amount of fundraisers. And one of the things, um, talking with Mr. Carroll and the auditors, we are unable to pay for hotels and meals for any state competitions, regional competitions, um, local competition of students. So as we begin to work on those budgets for next year and in some way trying to reduce those, that's been a little bit of a roadblock to that. So, But we are continuing to look at that. And um, as we get more in, as we continue to refine that budget, 
uh, we'll be able to present that to you hopefully in the next few months. Uh, any questions about activity fund report? Okay, activity fundraisers. We have one fundraiser, and this is for the cheerleaders to have a car wash. And this is actually um, for this summer. So this is going to be for their camp that they're going to this summer. And um, I would recommend that we approve that in just a minute. We've done a really good job of turning these in. I don't, we didn't think far enough ahead from, from last summer to, to this next summer, so uh, that is what this fundraiser pertains to. Child nutrition report. Uh, you can see in our child nutrition report that when you compare August to January 2018-2019, we are serving more lunches and more breakfasts um, to more students, so that is a good thing. Uh, continue to thank Mrs. Eccles for, for her work, and she does a great job. Of, um, I usually have a lot of questions for her, and she does a great job answering those questions for me. Um, are there any questions on the activity fundraiser or child nutrition report? If there are none, I would recommend that we approve the consent agenda. I had one comment on the minutes. Yes. Um, it's just me being technical. Okay. It says that Shane was absent, but then on the next page, he seconds a motion. <laughs> should we have some comment? Because he came in. I came in late. He came in late. But should we put that in the minutes that he it did? It should reflect that. Um, Attendance update taken at 508. Should show him. You see that when you click on there? <clears throat> um, okay. You look at it. Oh, so I, see. I see. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Good catch, though. Okay. Well, not really. Well, no, <laughs> no, no, it, needs to, it needs to be right. So thank you for that. I tried to read them. I tried to read them. You're just a. I got it. So I move that we approve the consent agenda. Uh, those items referenced in 3.2 through 3.6. A second. Hanson? Yes. Payne? Yes. Parker? Yes. Slater? Yes. McDermott? Aye. Right. Four, vote to approve purchase order encumbrances for the following funds for fiscal year 19. 4.1, general fund, as referenced. 4.2, building fund, as referenced. 4.3, child nutrition fund, as referenced. And 4.4, gift fund, as referenced. Okay, if we begin with 4.1, the general fund, um, just a couple of larger purchases that we have this month. Purchase order number 584 for 1700 um, And you'll see this, you'll see these on a couple of these funds. There's required amount that our libraries are spend each year. I believe it's $9 per student. So that's part of these, um, part of what these expenditures are and these purchase order purchase orders are. So 584 is perma, perma bound books, and that's for Washington's library. 586, Follette, that's another book company, um, $1,600, that's for um, Alva High School Library. Um, 592, Embassy Suites, that's our reservation for our summer conference for administrators. Purchase order number 602 for 2000, that is um, a, some multiple repairs that were done by Rose Plumbing. Um, we had some leaks in the gym after some snowfall uh, in the indoor facility, they worked on a water fountain. Um, sink in the concession stands and bathrooms, um, hooked up the uh, whirlpool in the training room in the indoor facility. Number 613 is RT diesel repair for 5000 That was to get our activity buses back in line. Uh, we had a diesel line that um, uh, was ruptured, a defrost motor that went down a few weeks ago, had to put a new starter in one of the buses, um, one of the activity buses, So, um, but we now have all those up and running. Purchase order number 615 um, for 6500 That is some uh, special, ed special education testing um, that we are conducting right now. If you look at the general fund payroll, um, those are all substitute pay for our substitute teachers. 4.2 building <coughs> fund. Um, that is with firm and construction. And you've seen this purchase order before. We had to go back and encumber some more. Money for this. This was the repair down at the bus barn. We had a water line break that went to the restroom. Um, so that is what this firm construction. They repaired some concrete. 
uh, down there in front of the bus barn. Uh, nothing in child nutrition this month, uh, 4.3, and then 4.4, the gift fund. Um, we had a student that transferred uh, from another state university to Northwestern, and this is for the Share Trust Scholarship. Are there any questions? this month. Carolyn Cole, uh, Lincoln Elementary fourth grade teacher, Bruce Dollar, um, high school history teacher, and Lydia Scalise, uh, Longfellow third grade teacher. Those three will be resigning. Um, we appreciate everything they've done for our public schools. I uh, wish them well um, in their new endeavors. Um, communications 5.2. Uh, just wanted to remind you all that strategic planning, our last strategic planning meeting will be next week. Um, is we're kind of getting to the stage now where we'll be closer to presenting it to the board in May. Um, so May, or excuse me, March 14th, we will be meeting um, out at the Career Tech and look forward to that opportunity uh, to work with our community again. It's been a really positive process. Um, encourage people to get online um, on our website and read about what's going on and what, what the community says about our schools. I um, want to talk a little bit about the report cards. Um, each principal um, is going to kind of visit just for a few minutes about our state report cards. Um, as you know, it's, it's, it's been um, in the news over the, over the past, I guess, week is when it was approved last Thursday by the State Board of Education, uh, the new state report card. And I can tell you that um, in preparing for this, there are 19 pages of uh, frequently asked questions. And so it's a daunting report card to understand, but I think that's a positive because our state has worked really hard um, to try to be fair, as fair as they can be. So there are many things, many details that as administrators we're still looking at and learning about it. But again, I think that's a good thing because I, I feel like that when this was developed, um, we are on the right track um, in being able to really evaluate our schools. And, and, and see how they're doing. So um, if you look at the first slide, um, I'm just going to briefly kind of touch on the components of the report card. There are, um, depending on what school you're in, there's six different components. You have academic achievement. And so each spring our students take a, um, a state assessment, and that is part of that report card, how they score on that test and the academic achievement. The next uh, component of the report card is academic growth. And this is the component that I think is, is really good for our students and our teachers. It, uh, it, it measures the actual, how a student does from year to year. And, and not only do you have to exceed a benchmark level, but you can move within a level, within a performance level. And so um, I believe that's uh, much better for our teachers and students, um, a more realistic picture of performance. Chronic absenteeism, um, each school is measured on the performance percentage of students that are at school, um, more than 10% in absences and you don't receive any points for a student. Graduation rate, um, students that graduate on time. Post-secondary, percentage of juniors and seniors who took at least one post-secondary opportunity. Um, there's a big push to, to offer more opportunities for our students um, and, and we look forward to continue to expand those uh, post-secondary opportunities for our young people. And then finally, ELPA. Um, English language progress assessment. So this percentage of students um, who met their WIDA target score. And uh, Ms. Lovelace is going to tackle this one, and this is a real difficult one. We've talked to you before about ELL and the importance um, of helping our students. It's not just conversational English. Um, it's, it's helping them understand the information in their classroom. Um, so, academic achievements. <coughs> Academic achievement, um, like Mr. Arter says, it measures the student's academic performance, and it measures it in the following areas on the Oklahoma uh, School Testing Program. Uh, ELA is worth 15 points, math 15, and science 5. 
for a total of 35 points. However, science is only in our fifth and eighth grades. So if uh, it's a site that does not have science, it will be 30 points. Um, this is measured in the April um, OSTP assessments, which we are all prepared for and getting ready to take here soon. Um, we have to test at least 95% of our students to get credit. And so attendance on test days is imperative. There is a window. Our schools all tend to take, we schedule the test at the top of the window, so if a student is absent, we can catch them at the, at the back end of the window, so the, therefore we can test all of our students. Um, all students are required um, to take the regular assessment, even if they have an IEP. It, it has to be pretty severe and profound for them to not qualify for that, and that there's five criteria that they have to meet all of them for the, the OAP, which is the Oklahoma Alternative Assessment Program. However, the majority of our students, even on an IEP, will be required to take um, the OSTP. Um, and every student is assigned a target in this process. I'm going to discuss academic growth. Um, the biggest part of this to me is that the terminology has changed a little bit from the past. So um, what we used to know as unsatisfactory is now known as below basic. Once, what we once knew as limited knowledge is now basic. So parents really need to understand that when they're looking at test scores too. And then proficient and advanced, that terminology is still the same. But um, as you can see here, that they can move from level to level each year as they take the test. Um, you get credit for moving within a level, and you get credit for, mo for moving between levels, or moving above. Um, I guess you can go to the next one. But it's very similar to our map test where we focus on growth. So really the goal is that they grow each time they take the test. That is our, that's our hope. Um, this is just an example of three students that might take the test and what kind of points we get on our report card for their growth. So the orange is a student that moved from below basic high, they moved up to basic low, and they received a value of 130. Example one. Example two is the blue, and that would be a student scoring at proficient low, and they moved down to basic high, and they received a score or a value of 80 for a report card. And then the last example is a student that scored advanced low, and they stayed in advanced low. Their value is 115. The reason that is higher is because they were in a more advanced difficulty level because they scored in advance. Um, do you guys have any questions about growth? Okay. Uh, Post-secondary opportunities. So, um, one of the things we get when we when we were able to get online and look at these reports, um, they gave us every student in Alva High School that had a post-secondary opportunity. So, what I put up here. These are the courses that we offer our students at Alva High School to achieve um, that one point or that post-secondary opportunity. And so you can see college algebra, electric, electrical trades, digital design and publishing, nursing, AP English, and so on and so forth. So these are some of those opportunities um, that students are able to get at Alva High School. We talk about graduation rate, and the high school really is the only one of the report cards that has this information on there. And what is um, what happens? I'm going to explain it to you without all the educational lingo, mumbo jumbo. As eighth graders, they come to us, and they they establish a cohort, a group of kids that come to us as eighth graders. We get a they they track those kids as they come through and we get a grade based on the number of those students that graduate from Alva High School. What happens is when, that, when a student moves off and goes to a different place and they separate from us for one reason or another, then um, we, have to, we still have to track that student wherever they go to see what, once they're established in that cohort, we, we actually on our report card this year got an F in this 
graduation cohort rate because we didn't do a really good job of tracking those kids once they left. We came back and started looking at that when we realized our grade was low on that. We went back and looked and we had the data from several of the kids that we got deemed for and we never did get it entered in the computer because we didn't feel like that was, um, you know, that they were, no, they were no longer our student. So we have since gone back. When I called and talked to them, once we figured out that was happening, I called and talked to the lady at the State Department, and she said, it's not going to matter now. You can correct it. Correct it. Keep doing, keep doing what you're doing and correct it, but we won't make that correction on this report card. Um, we... She did tell me, however, that we do have some corrections to make on your report card, and it had to do with ACT scores and, and student testing numbers that those students didn't get that get credit for the ACT score that they took. So they had corrected that part on their own. And she said, we'll correct that graduation data, but it won't show up this, it won't show up on this report card. So, um, so our score should go up once because we've done a better job of tracking those kids and, and I've visited with Mrs. Smithy and we um, are going to make sure that we track those kids that leave us and, and go somewhere else because once they enroll in another district somewhere, they're still our cohort as, until they graduate from high school. One of the things that we, um, we had a couple of kids that came back, they did not graduate with their group, with their cohort. And so they came back and finished the year after that. We get dinged because they didn't graduate with their cohort, but next year we get to count them, and we'll get credit for them if they come back a fifth year. If they're a fifth year graduate, we'll get, instead of getting dinged for that, we'll get credit for getting them back in and do that. We, we feel like, we've talked, and we feel like we need to do a better job of our students that separate from us, of giving them some other options rather than... Um, you know, we feel like rather than, because if they, if they say, we're going to homeschool, in Oklahoma, you can just say, we're going to homeschool. You don't have to enroll in any other program. You don't have to do anything else. There's no accountability. A parent can just say, I'm going to homeschool, and we get deemed for that. We're, as a district, are going to offer them some, maybe some online courses to take, so we won't get that full total separation. We can still count them through that, try to get them to, to continue working towards a degree until they realize it's important. They, when they get ready to separate from us, they feel like sometimes that degree is not very important or that diploma. And um, so we feel like if we can keep them in the loop a little while longer, they may not be progressing towards that diploma as fast as they should, but if we can keep them in the loop, then, um, then maybe by the time we get to their fourth year, fifth year even, that we can at least get them a diploma and work through that. So um, we've addressed some of the issues on that with, with our report card and, and what we're going to try to do better with that. Can I ask a question real quick? Yeah. When it comes to graduation, so you got deemed, nothing will be seen, will be a year? When the next, so for a year, card. you have to just suffer through with the F on graduation requirements? Yeah. Okay. And then we'll, and that should significantly okay. raise the next year. But it's a different cohort, too. You so bet. we've got to come back and, and make bet. sure with that sure. group that we sure. track them Call and make them, sure yeah. that we, right. we find out where they went and, and did that. Because what happened to them is we went, we send off a records request. Mm -hmm. or they, somebody sends us a records request, we didn't go back and enter that data in right. for that cohort, for that kid, that we knew where he went. We just didn't realize that you were follow so responsible. We, for right. Yeah. So I we'll, we'll do a better job with that. Okay. Thank you. I have a question, too. Okay. How does GED play into that? Do, do we get credit if they get a GED? We get dinged. That's a dropout for us. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, that's cool. Yeah, that's why we feel like if we can if we can offer them some edgenuity, some E2020, and keep them in, they may not come to our high school. You know, um, the private schools, the charter schools do a really good job of picking up our kids, that those marginal kids, and we probably as a public school should do a better job of trying to keep those kids in our in our contact group or in our in our cohort. We should do a better job doing that. But a GED hurts us. Okay, so this, these are my slides. <coughs> um, we're just talking about just to you know discuss what we're talking about, which population of student we're talking about. Are the English
English learners. And um, this is the only population that is figured into our report card, which I thought was interesting. This was the only population that was taken out as a different measure or a separate measure to uh, you know, factor into our report card. So just a little bit about how we get uh, identified English learners, just real quick. Uh, everybody in the district, you have to fill out a home language survey. And then from that, we determine whether or not uh, they qualify to take the WIDA screener. And depending upon their score on the WIDA screener, and this all has to be finished by October 1, we have the counts on how many students we serve. This year, our October 1 count was 62, and we actually serve five different languages, which is probably a surprise to you. We have five different languages in our, in our uh, school. So after they do that, and so then the students are tested in the spring. And just like the, site, uh, the slide said, using the WIDA assessment. <clears throat> and depending upon their growth targets, we then get points depending upon how much they grow. So, for instance, um, we only get four years to get them from their entry to our program to their exit. We only get four years. Uh, they have to have a 4.8 on the overall score to be exited from our English learner program. Okay, so if they come to us at a 2.0, the scale is on a, it's a 6 pin, or 6.0. We still have four years to get them to a 4.8. If they come to us at a 4.4, we still get four years to get them to a 4.8. So that baseline data doesn't matter as far as you still get four years. Okay. Uh, to exit the program again, you have to have a 4.8. Um, they have to show a high level of proficiency in reading, speaking, listening, and uh, reading, speaking, listening, and writing. And this isn't just conversational speech, just like what Mr. Argo was saying. It's that cognitive academic language proficiency. That means that they have to use that cognitive academic language to be proficient at this assessment. So it's, it's a tough assessment for, for English speakers, you know. Um, if, if a kid scores um, between a 4.5 and a 4.7, uh, a committee could be formed to determine if proficiency is met. And that's at an individual basis. But you have to score between a 4.5 and a 4.7 for that committee, for the committee to be convened, okay? And I also wanted to let you know that if you have 10 students that are English learners at a site, that affects the site-specific data as well and not just the district data. So this, is the, this, this population is a huge population for us to pay attention to. And, and it's just a good thing to do that anyway. And the strategies that we use for English learners are good for all students. Um, so if you'll go to the next one. I really, um, I had to consult with Mrs. Leiter, who is our ESL teacher. She's a rock star. Um, I didn't, I was, when I got this slide, I was like, I don't understand the plus signs. So really, what it should be is or. Okay, so the plus, I, I felt like this was saying that you have to do this and this and this, right? So, um, I and that wasn't my understanding, so I had to call Mrs. Leiter today and go, I don't think there needs to be pluses there, there needs to be ors. <coughs> Did you create this? <laughs> did you? I figured the state did. Because they're a little confusing not to say that. Okay, so anyway, I, I know I said that just a little bit. So sometimes... You know the difference between say. pluses and ors. Right. I do now. Never miss an opportunity to answer. I didn't mean, I didn't really mean right, that to do that. Keep going. Keep going. Clearly, I did it in front of everybody. That's all right. Just saying. So this is an or. This is an or. So meet their growth target, or uh, you know, like what I said about the committee, if they score a 4.5 to a 4.7, or are proficient first through fourth year. Okay, we still have to keep track after that fourth year, and so uh, we. Yeah, it's it is uh, quite the tracking. So, do you guys have any questions? I know that was a lot. Do we track every student like that? 
and it, just ones that are in this. We certainly track these, so we know which year they're in. That's we know, yeah, we know when they came to us. We know when their exit date is supposed to be. Enrollment um, process very important. Home language survey when we enroll, mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, really all of these things. The enrollment process is so important that we get correct information mm -hmm. and that we that we are asking for the correct information, that people understand the enrollment process because this is this is where they're pulling all of this. You know, so so those three days when we do that pre enrollment are really important. And Mrs. Leiter actually had a table at those three days and so we really have got solid data now I think and um, moving forward. So I feel like you know when we do the rounds this year we can start from that, that year. Do you guys have any other questions? Okay. I think I've done enough damage. <laughs> <laughs> you want to pull these up? Uh, this slide? Sure you can. <clears throat> I've tested the links. Okay. So Washington's uh, grade was a, a no grade. Uh, the only component, I mean, as far as the overall grade, we got no grade. Uh, the only component that Washington is assessed on is chronic absenteeism. And so uh, this is a, a percentage of students who are considered not to be chronically absent, meaning that they missed less than 10% of the year. So that amounts to 18 absences over the course of a year. And so when we get into the data, which I won't, I won't pull up here, there was, um, you know, maybe... 20 kids that had exceeded that 18 absences. And, um, you know, that's, it's very important for our parents to know, you know, all teachers want to do a good job for their kids, and we can't do that if they're not there. So uh, that would be Washington's grade. So Longfellow uh, also gets uh, an overall no grade but did get an A on academic achievement and a B on chronic absenteeism, which uh, to note, as we look at some of the other s schools across the state, um, you know, B is, has been pretty average in this area. Um, there are some schools that have some abysmal uh, attendance numbers, but uh, so anyway, that would be Longfellows. Can I ask a question? Sure. Is that include excused absences? Or any absence. Any? Any absence. Um, you know, not a DCA. Not a DCA. Not a DCA. We have, What's you know, when DCA? I look. Don't count absent. It's a kid that goes on a school trip. School Got activity. Okay. You know, when I looked at the data for Washington, there were some that we knew were maybe even in the hospital or had some extenuating circumstances. Mm -hmm. I'd say maybe a handful. And then the others maybe are just kind of just beyond that 18, maybe 18 to 24 absences, something like that. Is that include parties? No. No. It, it Absence the whole day. Yes. Thank you. Okay. You go to Lincoln's. Notice that between Washington and Longfellow, you had two components in Longfellow's, one in Washington's. When we get to Lincoln's, we have. Uh, several. So Lincoln gets a C overall, chronic absenteeism a B. Our numbers are usually in the low 90 percent percentage range, which is, is really good considering the state averages. Um, academic growth C, academic achievement C. They do not have enough English language proficient learners in that building to, uh, to get a grade on that particular component. You have to have at least 10. So um, yeah, we were kind of projecting some of those things out. Longfellow won't, Lincoln won't. There's two grades. Get to three grades, you might probably see that component. Middle school, overall C. Once again, they did not have enough English language proficient learners there as well. Now, one thing to note is if we're identifying these kids at an early age, and they've got four years to exit the program, they're likely to exit the program before they get to this point. So the kind of English language learners that we would run into would be kids that have moved in from out of district 
and have never been through that kind of a program. So, you know, we may not have that at that level. Uh, academic achievement C, uh, academic growth D, chronic absenteeism of D, still above the state average in, in that area, and overall we got a C. Can that be, is that broken down for grade at any of those? Like when, when we go to the uh, accountability application, which is on a single sign-on, we can drill that down to grade levels. Uh, we can drill that down a lot of ways. <coughs> student populations based on IEP or demographics and those kind of things. So, but what the what you see here, you're, you won't be able to pull that up because of uh, confidentiality of student names. And this is 17? Yes. Yeah. 17, 18. 17, 18. High school, C in academic achievement, F on graduation, which we know we're, we're remedying that. English language uh, proficient progress. We show 33%, that's a B, 33% uh, success. There were 12 English language learners in the high school, four of which met their growth targets. And then, and that's 2018 data compared to a 2017 baseline. We have new data that we'll have by this summer for the 2019 test window, and we, we know that some of those kids are going to end up uh, exiting the program, which is progress. So, um, chronic absenteeism, B, so, so by and large, attendance across the district is pretty solid. Uh, Post-secondary opportunities were above the state average uh, with a B, and our overall grade was also a B. So, questions on that one? As you notice, when you get to the high school level, all six components or all five components are figured in. Further left down you go, there's not the data to include all the components. <coughs> okay, so where do we go from here? <coughs> so as Mrs. Lovelace mentioned, the strategies that we use for ELL learners are good for all learners. And we're talking about reading, speaking, listening, and writing, which we've made a, a concerted <coughs> effort to push for those kind of things in the classroom. And we continue to train teachers and as principals and presenting these content area literacy strategies. You know, straight lecture is, is not that impactful compared to a content area literacy strategy. So we need to keep doing that because it builds critical thinking skills, which is going to help them on the ACT. Uh, reading is thinking, and writing is thinking on paper. We've got to continue to build that. The idea that you do small group discussions along with whole group discussions is also very important because back to the ELL learner, the idea that they're speaking in small groups where it's kind of a safe uh, <coughs> place to speak is going to be really big for them. So uh, common assessments like MAP, common PLCs, where they analyze that, that data is also going to be, be key. Uh, we want to continue the process of identifying ELL students. We think Mrs. Slider has done a fabulous job bringing us in compliance. She's done a fabulous job of working with our students, uh, and it's been a big, big job for her to reach every kid in the district that is, is ELL. Um, and she's also made an impact with our staff for them to understand what their role with the LL students is as well. Um, expanding and encouraging post-secondary opportunities in concurrent enrollment and career tech uh, is, is going to be key. Uh, those are those are things that we, we want to make sure that we're not holding our kids back um, and giving them the opportunities uh, to take those classes. And then emphasizing blended learning and virtual education as an alternative to the traditional classroom. So, you know, we have some kids that maybe don't function very well in a traditional classroom setting. We can't let them just go. We need to give them other pathways to earn that diploma. Um, alternative school, maybe homebound with uh, your, your Edgenuity program, uh, but those are, those are really important that we continue to push those kids towards graduation. Um, that will improve graduation rate and uh, drive that grade card up. So. Um, when we started in the fall of this year, these were some of the things that uh, 
we thought would be very important. Ms. Lovelace worked with, with me on this, putting this um, graphic organizer together. Um, these were programs that we thought could move the needle, that we knew could move the needle, that we've tried to um, spread across the district. And so this was the plan going into August. And then I happened to stumble back across this the other day and, and discuss, well, I wonder where we're at. So the green uh, represent things that are saw, have been solidly presented and adopted by the staff. PBIS would be one of those. So improving classroom management, creating a tiered system of behavior support with our district behavior teams, discussing uh, behavior objectively, meaning that behavior is really communication. They're trying to communicate something to us when we have misbehavior. And uh, reinforcing good behavior, strategic planning. So those things have all been very solidly adopted across the district. The orange are things that we've just begun to introduce, uh, the ABCs of, of discipline, uh, antecedent behavior, and uh, uh, consequence. And, and, and using our behavior data to shape how we're uh, addressing that, which we've been working with our PBS uh, presenter to do that. Uh, working with teachers to become reflective practitioners. If that strategy didn't work, what do we need to do to fix it? We want to throw it out, we want to, we want to refine it. And then complex texts, which um, teaching kids to read through complex texts and break those down and be able to comprehend them, which is key to the ACT. And then the blue represents things that we have been consistently presenting and we're seeing pockets of adoption. And that would be our content area literacy, um, which all those things are sort of tied together. Reading and writing across the curriculum. Uh, reading to, writing to learn and learning to write. Explicit vocabulary instruction. The use of primary source documents in science and history. Um, reading, writing, talking, listening will be small group discussions and trying to, to gain a deeper level of learning in, in those Oklahoma standards. And it's real, that part's been really fun. Um, I, I get emails and calls from teachers, and so I tried this, and man, it worked really good. And uh, why don't you come by and see me, see me try this, and that's been really neat to, uh, to get to go see teachers in different buildings attempting these different strategies and refining them. So we feel like we've made a lot of progress. <coughs> We, we, we know that it's going to make an impact. We think we just have to continue to, to push all these things and, and expand into the, the parts that are black. We haven't even begun to, to touch those yet. So um, much has been done. Much is left to be done. Any questions on that? Okay, I, just, just real quickly and briefly, um, over 132 proposed education bills. Um, about a week ago, there were over 300, and so they pared that down. So there's a lot of information. There's a lot of things going on at the Capitol. Um, there's a lot of proposed changes um, to school calendar. Um, uh, some transparency with uh, virtual charter schools um, and accountability with how they spend their money. Um, tax credits and so on and so forth and so um, we continue to stay on top of those things and, and communicate with our representatives um, uh, Senator Murdoch and, and Representative Newton and, and discuss some of these issues and, and offer to be resources uh, for them so um, just to make you aware of those at Longfellow, and I brought along with me Harper Bay. She's a second grade student in Mrs. Kennedy's class, and she's going she's gonna to be a lot funner to listen to. Oh, okay, good. So she's going to be a lot more entertaining than I am. Um, starting off, uh, something we started new this year is the Student of the Week. And this is an opportunity for every student in our building to kind of have the spotlight shine on them. 
um, at, once a week, we will we alternate. One week it'll be second grade, the next week it'll be third grade. Um, and here I have some pictures of some third graders on the left and some second graders on the right. Harper, do you want to kind of talk about what's in the middle? Tell them about the bulletin board. What did we put on that bulletin board? Pictures of, pictures of the people who got students of the week and what their favorite things are and uh, what they want to be when they grow up. Mm -hmm. They take home, I, I sent her a congratulations note that they, gotta be, they get to be the student of the week next week, and they get this, this kind of looks like a newspaper article, and they get to fill it out. They could either draw a picture, which you see a couple chose to draw a picture, or they can uh, paste a picture on there themselves, and we post it on the bulletin board right when you walk in, and they get to be there for a week. And then we also take their picture, and we put them on the web page, and um, so that we can kind of celebrate all of our students. And everyone gets an opportunity to do this. If they don't have to, you know, do something to be here. They're a student at Longfellow, so we want to celebrate them just being a student at Longfellow. So everyone's going to have an opportunity throughout the year to be a student of the week. Next slide. Another thing that we do at Longfellow is the manners table, and this is something Mr. Shaver started years ago, and I've continued, um, where we, the students get to pick every other, or they don't get to pick, excuse me, the teachers pick students who are really using their manners throughout the building and really doing things that need to be doing. And so I then set up a table and I have a tablecloth, chargers, cloth table, cloth, uh, napkins. I really try to make it something special. And they get to eat with me. And we do this every other Thursday. And I don't Harper, Harper has done this with me. I don't know if that's a picture of her up there. Um, and these students, I will go in line. We get to go to the front of the line. I will take their plate. I'm their little server for that day. And we, we get our plates. We sit down. They get to have a pop. And we talk about our day. You know, we'll talk about whatever activities are coming up. We talked about the snow. They played in the snow last week and how many people made snowmen. And, and just kind of talk about our day and have fun and kind of get on that level with them that we're all humans. You know, and we all like the same things. And I want to enjoy them, and I hope they enjoy me as well as their principal. And then they get to have Sundays afterwards. Do you remember what kind of toppings you get to pick, Harper? What? Do you remember what kind of toppings you get to put on your ice cream? Um, chocolate and strawberry. And caramel. Mm -hmm. And then the big, the most important question they always ask, can we put all three? No, we're not. <laughs> absolutely. If you're going to eat it, you absolutely can. And so I try to take pictures, and we also post these on the web page. Next slide. Um, you, I know you've heard quite a bit about this with the other presen uh, presenters throughout the last couple months. Um, PBIS is our Positive Behavioral Interventions and Supports. We are reinforcing positive behavior throughout the building. And we are doing this at um, Washington through um, the middle school right now. The first thing we did, we, we developed a school matrix that talked about the bug standard. And I'll let Harper explain that here in the next slide. Our matrix consisted of restroom, bathroom, or excuse me, restroom, classroom, hallway, playground, bus, cafeteria, assemblies, circle drive. These are kind of the areas that we saw that we need to, we need to tidy up a little bit and we needed to make sure that we are doing the things that we need to be doing when we are in these areas. We had three different assemblies to introduce our uh, PBIS in small chunks. Second and third graders, if we throw it all at them at one time, it's not going to stick. So we broke them down into three chunks, and we had an assembly on a Monday morning, and then the next week we had it on the next Monday morning. I believe one was a Tuesday, because I think we had a Martin Luther King Day in there. And the students all came into and first thing in the morning, and we met, and I put together a power slide, and we talked about what our bud standard was. And we also did a few teasers. Um, we had a lot of, what did we post all over the building before we told you what we were doing? Um, Big gotcha. signs that said, gotcha. gotcha, and we didn't tell you what it meant, did we? Mm -hmm. We tried to build it up a little bit, and the teachers also did a, I should have showed you the video, that would have been very entertaining. <laughs> we also put together a video demonstrating what are the behaviors we want in the different areas to look like. 
Next slide, please. Harper, would you like to explain what the bug standard is? Be respectful, use kind words and actions, give your best effort, and show responsibility. Perfect. And then, so in each bathroom, what does that look like? And we broke down, you know, what does be respectful look like? What does use kind words and actions look like in a bathroom? We broke it down in the assembly for them. And then currently, this is what our gotcha looks like. It's front and back. However, we are, we are changing it. Once we run out of these gotchas, we have decided to uh, align the process. And I know uh, in Washington and at Lincoln, they're currently already using a triplicate form. And so ours will go into a triplicate form as soon as these are, you heard it here first, Harper. I haven't shared that with you yet, have I? <laughs> as soon as we run out of these, <laughs> she's got the news, she could go tell the one, there'll be a triplicate form. And that way, it'll be the same process from building to building, so they already know what to expect. Go ahead and walk to the next. So when you get a gotcha, tell them what you do with that, Harper. When you get a gotcha, what do you do with it? You put it in one of the buckets, and you, if you get picked, you get to do what it says on the bucket. Mm -hmm. So they get, a, they get a choice. We have a daily drawing, and they take their gotcha, and we punch it currently. Once we have the triplicates, that'll take, we won't have to punch it anymore. We'll just put one of the forms in there. But currently, we, we punch it. They write their name on a ticket. Their ticket goes in one of the buckets. They get a pick. And then each, each day at the end of the day, we draw for the next day. We have morning announcements where the students get to read the morning announcements to and do the pledges over our intercom system. That's a pretty popular one. Lunch from VIP, which you can imagine is probably very popular, where they get to sit at a special table and they get to pick a friend to sit with. They usually sit with their, class, with their, their classmates and who's just in their class, and so they can pick anyone in the entire grade to sit with them. And then a pencil, pencil pouch. When Browns was going out of business, they donated us a bunch of pencil pouches, and we put pencils and candy in there. And so they get to pick which drawing they want to go to. They may get picked, they may not get picked. But the process is there, and they're doing, hopefully, everything for the right reasons. Okay, next one. Then we also have some weekly drawings. One up here is um, two of my students got to go on a ride-along with Officer Clack last week. And we got to go to the um, prison wants to come out. That's we didn't go to the prison. We, we go to the police department. Sorry, my brain wasn't thinking that. Way. I was like, we did not go to the prison. <laughs> we went to the police department, and they got to tour the police department. And he was going to let them see, I guess, the old jail that is no longer, but we couldn't see it that day for some reason. So. Um, one of the other options is to have an ice cream date with Mrs. Tucker. And that's in every other um, week that we do. And we're also rotating right along with the police officer, with right along with the fire department in Washington. And Lincoln, is, they're doing that as well. I believe that was um, Mrs. Williams' idea. It was a great idea. So it was really all, Dr. Ripple's idea. Oh, well, there you go. Well, we all, we all <laughs> took, took board of that one. And then this is another fun one, is dress your teacher. <laughs> and we do that every, Mr. Chapman, bless his heart, out of the three times he's been picked twice. <laughs> um, he was Wonder Woman that day. Uh, and so we do the dress your teacher it. on the same Fridays that we do Friday finale. So everyone in the building gets oh, get to, to see, see them. So, and I, I've, had, I've had the pleasure of being picked for a dress your teacher as well. So I don't know why there wasn't a picture of me available, uh, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but it's been a lot of fun. Um, <coughs> and then now I have Ms. Harper here also to talk about literacy fair. We just got done doing our second grade literacy fair. We did a third grade literacy fair during the first parent-teacher conferences in the fall. And then second grade got to participate for this parent-teacher conferences. And here's a picture of several of the um, projects students did. And Harper, as you can see, kind of knocked it out of the park with her um, literacy fair project. And I'm going to let her talk about it a little bit. Harper, can I go up there? I did a Harry Potter Lego because I have re read two of the books, and this is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. 
here's the Quidditch match. And it has uh, some of the players uh, in it, and they are about to do a Quidditch match. <laughs> here's the castle. It has the Whomping Willow when they get Harry and man's wrong gets stuck in the car when the, it's stuck in the tree and the, there are pe people in the castle and the, there are some things that I have in it and a lot of the pieces I have are a lot of them are figures, and some of them are like they're standing out or they're sitting somewhere. She worked very hard on that. You can see the detail, it's quite impressive. Barbara, how long do you think that took you to do? Uh, I can't even count those hours. Like a month. No. No, not a month. She did a great job. That's fabulous. Uh, something else, real quick, before I go on to state assessments is another thing that we are doing, and this is district wide, this is all five of our buildings, is a positive note card. And this just gives any staff member in our building an opportunity to share something positive, great works from our students with parents. And so we're all um, going to do this. Mrs. Williams designed them. They look great. And so we're excited that we are going to just have one more opportunity to share what's going on in our schools and to celebrate our students because they are we have great students. We have the best students here. And we want to celebrate them, and we really want to pat them on the back when they're doing things well. Um, on state assessments, uh, yes, third grade students will be taken uh, two sections of the OSTP. We take the ELA and we take the math. Um, they don't take science until they hit fifth grade. Third grade will be the only grade taking a pencil and paper test this year. So luckily, we don't have to make that big change that they have to make um, with Mrs. Williams and on up. We will still have the pencil paper, so that'll have a little bit of familiarity. But you know, I really like to think about it. With the maps test, it might be not that big of a jump because they're used to taking tests now on on a, on the computer anymore. Um, third grade teachers are are using their student enrichment time to review and to develop a deeper understanding of each standard. I know my third grade teachers came, I believe, in October and spoke a little bit about the enrichment group. And one of my teachers was going to come today, but unfortunately she wasn't able to make it. Um, just real quickly, and I won't take a lot of time because I know this has been a longer uh, meeting. Um, when they first presented, they were meeting 25 minutes in their enrichment groups and going deeper in, at level of where the kids are. And we divide those groups based on the MAP score. In December, when we took our second MAP score, they reshuffled the groups so that they, if the kids, some kids moved up, maybe a few moved down, but not very many. Most of them are moving up, which is the goal. And so, what they're doing is, is we added 25 more minutes. We rearranged a little bit in our schedule to be able to give them that time so that they can go a little bit deeper in their standards to really prepare their students. Um, just a quick example of kind of what maybe it looks like. Not what maybe, what it does look like. Today they talked about inferencing. And so in all the, they, there's five groups. In all the groups, they did this sheet together. So they all had something that looked familiar. And then each group then took inferencing where they were at. So the lowest group might, um, took inferencing very simply. This one discussed, they were supposed to find out or decide whether it's daytime or nighttime. Um, and they read together, the school bell rang, students walked out the door with their backpacks on um, and, and homework. So then they cut them out and they put it on daytime or nighttime. So we could take it basic all the way to going up to like our top group who took 
comic strips and broke them down scene by scene. She put this up on the Promethean. Scene by scene with Garfield. You know, he's always got some great expressions. And they were trying, and there was questions for each scene, you know, look at Garfield's face. You know, um, what do you think his exp facial expression is saying? And then they go to the next frame. And so we're taken at where they're at and the writing is going deeper, and then they'll go back to their classrooms with the rest of their classmates where they come back together, and then they have discussions, and then the students are speaking about what they learned so they're learning from each other. So I've seen several of their observations during this time, and they're doing really great things, and they're really expanding and hitting kids where they're at, and allowing those kids who are ready to take off, they're gonna let them go and, and keep pushing them, and the kids down here are gonna meet them where they're at and keep pushing them, to get in that next group. Hopefully we won't have level group one yeah. the next time we do a match test. But, and that's all I have. Is there any questions? Very nice. Right. Can you. I say something positive? Absolutely. I heard a wonderful comment about your building the other day. One of our teachers had to be over at Longfellow and they said it was really neat. They had to stand outside each door and wait for um, the, the wait for a second and they heard the exact same lesson and being taught at the exact same time in every but in different ways to meet their kids. So awesome. it was they were like it was the most amazing thing to see. Thanks so, for sharing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Items of current business. Where we are? 7.1, discussion with possible board action, vote to approve an offer of employment on a one-year temporary contract to applicant number one, certified teacher for the 2019-2020 school year. Ms. Potter. I am pleased to bring Adam Stewart to the board tonight to be approved to be our new band director. Um, he comes to us via Tennessee for five or six years there, and then uh, he's been at Cimarron the last few years, a couple years maybe? Uh, three years, four years, okay. four years. And he, um, everybody that I have talked to since we interviewed him and different things, that his bands come with, they're full of energy, great sound, he's got um, field marching experience. Um, we're real excited about the places that, um, that he can take our band and do those things, and I know Karen and Nick have been real excited about him coming and, and doing that, and we are we are really excited that he's coming on board with us to do that. So I would very much like to recommend Adam to be our next band director at Alva High School and Alva Middle School. I might, th I might say, too, I want to thank Kara for stepping in and stepping up for us. Um, we can't thank you enough um, for what you've done for the band at the middle school and high school, and we really appreciate it. Um, and we're happy that Adam is here and we can provide some relief for you. Thank you. Second that. Slater? Yes. Hanson? Yes. Kane? Yes. McDermott? Yes. Parker? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Board action vote to approve out of state travel for the Alba FFA to attend the livestock training contest in Hutchison, Kansas on April 17, 2019. The FFA has attended this contest over the last few years. So I would make this recommendation to the board. Motion. I would like to motion that we approve the FFA going to Hutchison, Kansas. Second. Kane? Yes. Hanson? Yes. Parker? Yes. McDermott? Aye. Slater? Yes. 7.3. Discussion with possible board action vote to approve renewal of the contracts for the following principals for fiscal year 20. Mr. Les Potter, our high school. Ms. Stephanie Martini, our middle school. Mrs. Madison Williams, Lincoln Elementary. Mrs. Allison Tucker, Longfellow Elementary. 
and Mr. Shane Feely, Washington Elementary. I want to thank the principals. Um, they have helped me, first year superintendent. Um, it's been new and there's been change involved in, in all of that. We've started strategic planning. Um, you can see a new report card. Um, we have some challenges and some things that we all recognize we've got to get better at. We've set some goals to, to achieve those. And at this time, I would recommend that we renew the uh, following principles as listed for FY20. So moved. Second. Second. Kane? Yes. Dermot? Aye. Hanson? Yes. Parker? Yes. Slater? Yes. Eight. Proposed executive session to discuss the evaluation of the employment of Tim Arco. We, we got one more. We got uh, seven four, Jane. Seven four. Extra duty. Okay, it's it's not, I, I left it off. Okay. Let me find it. Let me say. 7.4. Discussion of possible board action. Vote to approve the revised extra duty assignments. This is for year 2018-19. Okay, and so this is this is with our girls golf and boys golf. And if you'll notice on the attachment, um, we are going to have enough girls for our golf team. And at one time, we did not think we would. Um, so Mindy White is going to be our girls golf coach. And that is the corresponding stipe. And I believe it was 12 years golf experience she had when she was out. Um, at Boise City. So um, I would recommend that we uh, approve this revised extra duty assignment schedule for 2018-2019. I would make the motion that we accept this revised extra duty contract for call. Second. Yes. McDermott? Aye. Uh, Parker? Yes. Slater? Yes. Kane? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Arngo. No, not too much, too much paper chase here. Yeah, no, right. All right. All right. Now you. we are. Number eight. Discussion. Proposed. Executive session. Discuss the evaluation and appointment of Tim Arngo, superintendent for 25 Oklahoma State Section 307B1. Evaluation topic would be student services. Which includes school environment, systems of support, student engagement, relationships, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and we'll be ready. No. I guess that's all. Yep. And relationships. Yep. We'll make a motion to go to executive session. Second. Thank you for that. Okay. Oh, yes. Aye. Yes. 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 Yes.